Yeah, you know, I have I have conflicting thoughts because on, on one end, I definitely think and believe that he does deserve to be in the top 100. And especially like he said, if, if a guy who didn't play last year can make it, then, you, you know, what's the deal here? And so I, I get that part of it and I get the disrespect part of it. But, and, you know, and when you took it, take a look at who's ahead of him, you know, there are some names that you can see he's better than that. But I've always still considered him to be just like a very, very good player and still not necessarily a superstar. You know what I mean? And also, I think it, it doesn't help being on a losing team, a losing right. roster. And so I think maybe next year he'll make that list and he'll crack that list. But I, I can kind of understand it to a degree a little bit of why it didn't happen. But, yeah, he took – it seems like he took it a little personal, huh? He did, you know, and – the thing is, it's like if you remember a year ago at this point, there was division between Chicago Bears fans as to whether Jalen should be uh, extended, a, a given a contract extension because he's he, everybody would say he's, he doesn't make interceptions. That's the big thing. That's the big thing. And as soon as they traded for Montez Sweat, all of a sudden <laughs> he's, he's making interceptions because all of the best uh uh, interceptors in the National Football League have a pass rush, and the Bears had nothing resembling a pass rush before Montez Sweat. So that was the big thing. The other thing I'd like to say is I think a lot of this voting stuff by NFL players, you know, they get this stuff in the mail, or they print it out from email, and so and they hand it to, to you know, their son, you know, hey, uh, a guy at the bar, you want to fill this out for me? They don't take it seriously. And so that, I, you know, there's a lot of factors why he, he's out of that 100. I would add those two, uh, Paul, to, to your uh, assertion. Funny thing is, is actually I'm pointing at one of the guys who didn't want to give Jalen a, a contract so, <laughs> no. uh, I, I, for the right price well for the right price but that that's my thing is because i don't that's it, because he didn't have the interceptions and although you hit the nail on the head it's it's the defensive line pressure that matters so much mm -hmm. to create opportunities for these guys i mean we always talk back about the 2006 season and point to a guy like nate vasher i think he had seven interceptions that year and if yeah. you look at him, it's always just right place, right time. He never matched that number throughout the rest of his career. And, yeah, there was defensive line pressure that year, and <laughs> things were going according to plan, and you were going to have opportunities at turnovers. And so, you know, m at the beginning of the year, we did bold predictions, David. I don't know if you remember. We did uh, an offensive bold prediction and a defensive bold prediction. And my defensive one was that Jalen Johnson would get two interceptions, <laughs> right? Because, I mean, that's that's where it was at. And so when it comes to contract time, I think yeah. when we discussed it, $18 million's right kind of where it made sense to us even. And then for it to happen that way was just like, wow, that is really, you know, it's a good contract on both sides. Because if he wanted to be the top paid corner in the league, I mm -hmm. probably would have passed, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so funny because you said it that way. I remember the, the way you predicted it was hilarious because you went, he's going to double his career total this season with two. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Guilty. Yeah. And then, no, yeah, we, we basically said it because I said give him 20, you said 16, and they gave him out, you know, 18. So that makes sense. Two things about that list, which although I think perfect, like what you said, for Jalen, poor Jalen, because they did do honorable mentions in that list. So he was like, maybe I was 101. He's not even 110, which I is, I think that's silly as hell. Two, like you were saying, with these guys that just fill this list out either arbitrarily or honestly, I think it's by feeling sometimes. Because oh, yeah. when you go back to last year's 100, top 100, I think Justin Fields is in like the 40s or the 60s. And mm -hmm. I mean, we all, you know, we, we don't say those names anymore. This is the Voldemort now, you know, it's like JF, you just say that guy, but like, that you know, in Pittsburgh, <laughs> that guy in Pittsburgh, he's really like, he was fun to watch that, that one season, but to say he was the 40th best player in the league is silly. And then the third thing I'll say about it is any list that has this and doesn't have Patrick Mahomes at one is just null and void. Right. And he was number four this year. So, like, you can't tell me that every th – these players are kind of just, like, butthurt that he's knocking them out of the playoffs. He's winning rings every year, and he, they're just mad that – you know. So, I don't know what it is Jalen Johnson did to piss everybody off, but, I mean, like, he, he deserves to be at least in the 100. I mean, that's guaranteed. And I think the, the, the other part of it, you know, I don't, I don't know if this was mentioned. I don't think it was, is, you know, he wasn't – 
on national TV enough, or he didn't have those games on national TV that helped that, you know, a lot of football players, they, just, they watch game of the week. They, how can they vote on somebody they, they didn't even see play last season? And that's was probably the case with a lot of these guys that voted. They never saw uh, Jalen Johnson play because I, I want to say, was it was the last national TV game they had last year was against the commanders early in? No, I would, there was one afterwards. Um, Man, I, see, this is where I want to say it was the Packers. This is where Dan Aguire fits right in. He would yeah, right. know. Ex- <laughs> he would know who commented it. I mean, that yeah. guy's memory is crazy. I no, I, I get. I don't get what you're getting at. Although, it's like you know, he had two picks against the Raiders. He had a pick against the Commanders. These kind of mm-hmm. like these not super great quarterbacks, but you know, like mm-hmm. I mean, when you're still making uh, Jair Alexander considered one of the best. You know, I remember. I remember a few Packers games watching lately where. Uh, who was our? Who was the guy we got from the Patriots? Just Nikhil Harry. Jair, Nikhil Harry, and then he just yeah. toasted Nikhil, uh, toasted Jair Alexander, and you still got Jair Alexander being a top, you know, whatever fifty player, and that guy's <laughs> Looney Tune yeah. now. So. I'm hoping uh, Jalen keeps it up because you know, would I bet you know my Social Security check that uh, Jalen Johnson is going to have a Pro Bowl caliber season this season. My heart as a Bears fan would say yes, but given the body of work, I don't, I don't think it's a sure bet. I, the guy is good. A lot is going to depend about what happens around him. Is Montez Sweat and Jervon Dexter, you know, because those are the two primary pass rushers as of today, uh, maybe uh, Booker, are those guys going to pr- provide a, a push to help the defensive backs? Is uh, uh, Tyreek Stevenson going to be, you know, that other lockdown type cornerback? And he's shown signs that he can be so that Jalen Johnson could get passes thrown his way. <laughs> you know? So th- there's a lot of different factors involved. Uh, I, I, you know, as, again, as a Bears fan, I, I will say they're going to go 17 and 0 and win the Super Bowl 100 and nothing. But when I put my head down in the bill, I go, what the hell did I say? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Did you see, uh, would you take a look at the schedule, Paul? I did find this. I did find that we were scheduled for four. We we're scheduled for the Washington one. Okay. The Chargers. Oh yeah. We're scheduled. The Panthers and then the Vikings week twelve. Okay. I, yeah. I'm not sure if Panthers they'd would have been the last one. I th- probably. I, yeah. Panthers I was Justin. a Thursday nighter. Right. I think the Vikings one was flexed. Yeah. 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 I think okay. the Chargers might have been flexed too because I think at that point Justin Herbert was hurt and Justin Fields. But to all those points, like, yeah, for sure. I was doing the numbers and I saw this statistic. Uh, 10, 10 or eight games into the season, uh, Jalen Johnson was targeted, uh, I want to say like 26 times by the time Tyreek Stevenson was targeted about like 80 times. Mm-hmm. So like last year, I mean, it's just one of those things where like corners have a hard time uh, – you know, justifying their stats when they're not getting picks. But if you're not getting thrown at, that's kind of part of the whole justification of the stats, right? It's like, he's so locked down. I'm not even going to look that way. I'm just going to abuse the other guy. And so like what Tyreek is kind of proving is he's no scrub now. Uh, You know, he had that one game against the Raiders. He locked up Devontae Adams. I mean, I, I remember a few games where he locked up a couple of like number ones towards the middle end of the season for Tyreek. And then Kyler, who, you know, Got a lot better. Terrell uh, Terrell Smith is getting you know some time now, so that four, that mm-hmm. dime set's looking really good. And then, um, yeah, I think part of that is and what you're alluding to is like, would you bet your your social on on the uh, on Jalen Johnson having a year? A, he didn't get paid like a top top flight corner, and B, I mean, until he does it again, he's a guy who played really well in his contract year. So this is mm-hmm. the year, right? Because like we've seen it a hundred times in the NFL is. Guys get super motivated. They play like balls to the wall, lights out their contract year. They get paid and then they chill and then they kind of take a little dip. But hopefully this pissed them off just enough to kind of, you know, like I'm that disrespected. I got paid in a good year and that's what I get. Like, I think it might have been a kind of blessing in disguise. I'm not one of those rah rah guys, but it might have been. His interceptions did all come from backup quarterbacks, I believe. And so, um, so media, listen, low level starters or, or backups, yes. Right. Yeah, and then yeah. and then two, um, you know, he could not be getting thrown at because he's locked the guy down, or he could not be getting thrown at because it's easier to target the other holes. Sure, absolutely. Because we were weaker in those spots. So there's right. 
different ways of looking at it. I'm just saying. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I think now uh, secondary might be one of the great, good strengths on this team. So, um, yeah, Jalen Johnson might see his first share of targets all of a sudden, I think. I think it was a fortuitous thing because, you know, as Dave said and you said, Paul, you, know, you got the first half of the season. They're not throwing Jalen's way. They're p- trying to pick on Tyreek, and Tyreek was challenged. And a lot of times he lost. He'd come up with a great play, but then a play later, pass interference for 40 yards and stuff, or got beat for a touchdown and so forth. So th- during that time, though, Jalen is gaining more confidence because he's saying to himself, you guys are afraid to throw to me. I mean, he literally was saying that to the opposite team. You guys are afraid to throw to me. And Tyreek, he's a tough SLB. He's getting, you know, steal. He, he is, uh, what's the word that I want? He, he's getting steal out of being challenged over and over. He's so competitive. He just said, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. And by the second half of the season, the guy was playing rookie of the year level. So it could have been all, you know, a uh, uh, divine intervention that finally the Bears get a break and, and this worked out in, in their favor. We always try to call a few things early, but I remember like it was like week eight or week nine. And I'm like, Polly, this is a top five defense towards the end of the season. So like halfway through, you know, once they got Montez Sweat and they started clicking and the defense started going through, I think we ended up being pretty OK with that just because I think they stumble into a few things. I think people tend to forget. And even like this year is this uh we did the math it was like nine out of 11 starters from 2022 to 2023 were brand new mm-hmm. Every, like nine out of 12 even uh, it was a we don't have to go through the list but now you got you know i think they stumbled into a few upgrades as well with Jervon dexter really that was one of my guys man i really am I'm, I'm glad that like everybody else is kind of on that train now too because I was really loving that kid towards the end of the season. And then I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I don't think there's much of a downgrade possible than Eddie Jackson. Mm -hmm. So the Kevin (laughs) Byard thing towards the end of last year, like Eddie Jackson, I mean, was just an absolute turnstile. He was like the last safety to finally go somewhere. And I think so. It's not even our it's the league isn't it's it's throwing that out there. Yeah, Kevin Byard is going to be a huge upgrade, and he's already like getting huge praises in training camp for just a guy that's always in the right spot. He's Mm -hmm. like seen it all. He's ten years in. Yeah, sure, he maybe is like losing a step or something, but he's a captain of the defense kind of thing. You know, like have you you can tell people what to do? Have you heard the press conference with him? Yeah, I mean he's smart too. Very smart. Great, great leader, you know, uses his experience to help teach the younger guys. You know, this past, I think he was at the podium on Saturday and or, or yeah, Saturday, and he was talking about the other young defensive backs. And he said, you know, frankly, I don't consider them young. You know, Brisker and, uh, of course, Jalen Johnson and Tyreek, they've all played a lot of games. Tyreek, you know, one season and Brisker two two or three seasons, he said. And then Jalen, of course, is, is Pro Bowl caliber. I don't consider these guys young, and I consider them you know, really hungry. Every one of them wants to get to the next level, wants to get Pro Bowl and so forth. So he was, you know, the way he talks up that defensive back room uh, is so effing impressive, and it, it – I don't think he's blowing smoke. You know, a lot of times it's this time of the year, everybody's having a great camp, you know, and turn on the NFL network and they're at one camp. Yeah, things are great over here. Let's throw it to another camp. Yeah, things are great over here. Let's throw it to another camp. Things are even great over here. It's like, come on, it can't be that good. <laughs> Funny how you say that, because I think that's where we all heard the uh, the Caleb Williams water bottle story, right? The pick up your yeah. towels thing from Kevin Byard. And yeah. it's so funny because like in society now, right? Nobody can ever find a freaking middle ground. And it's so funny because you had people and I remember him mentioning the water bottle thing. And instantly, I just remembered that clip from NFL films of Ed Reed talking about how the the year they won the Super Bowl. Yes. And he was just like, boys, it's about the little things like you guys. It, it, if this is how you treat your locker room and your space, then no wonder like your head's not in the right place because you're not on it in that level. I you remember that, Paul? No, I posted yeah, it on Twitter immediately. recently, on our, on our Bearski Twitter. Yeah, right, just, immediately. I, it's nothing just, said, just video clip. posted. Yep, <laughs> and, uh, and then it's so funny because then you have like people like Amani Toomer, if you remember Amani Toomer in like the 2000s, yeah. the Giants receiver, and he's going out there going like, who the hell does this guy think he is? And he's what a joke. And like this is going to be, uh, forget who he said, some rookie quarterback all over again. And then this and that. 
And it's just so stupid that we can't ever and, find some like nice middle ground. But I'm personally a fan. And meanwhile, meanwhile, last year, when talks about drafting Jalen Carter came up, one of the things Ryan Pohl said is he mentioned leadership in the locker room, not maybe being where it needs to be. And I think that might have changed real quick the second Caleb got there. And you see that in great quarterbacks. It's one of the things that really gets me excited. Mm -hmm. Well, and I totally agreed with Ryan. You know, there's no doubt that Jalen Carter has all the tools to be a phenomenal defensive tackle, probably play at the same level as Aaron Donald. But it was clear that they spent a lot of time with the guy and did a lot of investigative work. This guy, you, we couldn't gamble on his maturity level, not getting him in trouble. And he, they're still pending lawsuits on him, people accusing him of this or that. So he's not completely out of the woods. And the Bears didn't have, you know, uh, they had some veterans on the team, but it's not like the Eagles. The Eagles are, you know, a complete veteran team, offense and defense. That was a perfect situation for Carter. And we've we've been, as Bears fans, I, I think you guys are like me, you know, for years and years we've been saying, hey, how about the offensive line? How about the offensive line? So now you're able to trade back pick up Darnell right as a cornerstone right tackle, get a little more draft assets. And so uh, applause, applause for Ryan Pose. I think that that was a win for him. Now, Carter could end up being a Hall of Famer, uh, but if Darnell Wright makes it to a few Pro Bowls and so forth, I will still stand by the fact that I think he made the right decision. You know what's funny about the Eagles? They're the defensive coordinators. They went from Sean Desai to Vic Fangio. Yes, <laughs> we went from Vic Fangio to Sean Desai. I'm pretty sure. I That's, think they do it right yeah, over there. And, uh, right. We might have yeah. it backwards. Dumb it.